So this is a good <clears> opportunity <throat> to bring up Fox News voter analysis. You saw it in Iowa, New Hampshire, latest South Carolina. I mean, it almost became unsurprising that immigration was topping the list of top concerns for voters uh, facing the country today. It's no longer just the economy. That was number two in each of the three states. Um, but it is now about immigration. Um, and most people, most of those Republicans responding do say they favor a border wall. This is all working in favor of Donald Trump and his reelection campaign. Most Americans favor a border wall. In the two o'clock hour today on our show, um, I reached out to this person last night. He was featured in the Los Angeles Times multiple occasions over the past decade. He lost his 25 year old son in 2010 to a Honduras immigrant. He wrote me a letter last night responding to what we heard from the um, Democrat Congresswoman Porter, who said, you know, well, we, Porter. we can't just let this one instance, the right. brutal killing of a 22 year old university student down there in Georgia. We can't let this one instance shape our immigration policy. He's clearly outraged by that. And he is a big advocate for doing something about immigration and to not have crimes like this happen to anyone else's sons or daughters. So he's going to be coming on the program today. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty important too. How about the fact that I did not know it. Athens is sanctuary city. And it turns out this guy committed a crime in a sanctuary city. And that's one of the reasons it's not sanctuary city. It's not. The mayor says it's not. Um, and, and, and he was never technically arrested. Um, so while they do have some exceptions for are you checking my work there, although they do have some exceptions where if there is an arrest, then ICE can come in. But that wouldn't apply to the situation. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Aiden, but it wouldn't apply to the situation because he was cited in the in the theft that he was charged with. Right. But he was not arrested. So it, it gets really muddy. But I don't know if you were watching the mayor in Athens who stepped out this morning. Oh, there was some screaming going on. There was protest because residents showed up and said, you've got blood on your hands. This is a mayor who why not come out and say this is absolutely terrible what happened to this university student and the horror that the, the these kids are now having to live through on their campus because of yeah. this brutal slang. I'm going to do something about it. He then started talking about what he's done to increase the police force, how they're going to make the community safer. To me, as I had said to Hemmer when we were listening to that, this is putting Band-Aid on a problem. Why are we not talking about these illegal immigrants coming over the border? I mean, you look back at the things that this administration, Brian, we've been rolling tape. Right. The things that we were hearing from Kamala Harris, when these migrants, this migrant who killed that 22-year-old girl, was walking over the border, what were they saying? The border's secure, Mayorkas was saying in that moment. Oh, yeah. Kamala Harris was saying, we're doing more for immigration you know, than, than any previous administration. No one believes it. They downplayed it. They ignored it. And meanwhile, these killers were walking over the border. So this guy, Abara, who killed uh, Lake and Riley, they say he blew off a court appearance for shoplifting in December. He was arrested. Uh, he was arrested in Georgia on the October 27th. A bench warrant was issued for him. So he was arrested on, on the 27th in December. Uh, uh, December he was arrested. There was a bench warrant out for him already. And, you know, he got in trouble in New York. So he was in trouble in New York for driving around with a kid without a helmet on. Should have been detained for that, putting a child in danger. Then he leaves his wife, goes down to Georgia, hangs out with his brother, who was working at the Cafeteria University of Georgia, and somehow thought it was a great idea to, to uh, beat up a University of Georgia student and then kill her. And we don't know the details of it, but the question is, why is this guy here? And the fact is, you now have a mayor of New York who said, I really think it's time to modify the sanctuary city and let, uh, or let ICE work with our cops. A lot of times, ICE should lead the cops and yeah. say, I got something on these guys that you don't have. Yeah. That's the way it used to work. Guy, you know that guy behind bars? It's worse than you think. With the neck tattoo, he's uh, in a, and I'm going to take him. That's the way it used to be. Bottom line, we're dealing with people who should never have been here in the first place. Yeah. Um, they should never have been in the country in the first place. And this is an administration who's now only dealing with the problem because it's been a, it become a major political headache as the president's running for re-election. And then the media coverage of the story as a runner, I'm highly insulted by the media coverage that now we need we need to we need to look at at, at runners and the, the dangers of running early in the morning or at night. Like yeah. we're supposed to change yeah. the way we live to adapt to these horrific policies that are leading to these stories that, as Bill Malugin put it, it there's almost 
too many to report here. I mean, you've got the the incident in Virginia, the assault of a minor of an illegal immigrant there. You have this the latest happening down there in Louisiana. Um, this is just an awful, awful situation that seems to only be getting worse. So, I mean, the president of the United States there, there are issues that come to him. He's strong on this, obviously strong on this. So now you're going to have tomorrow in Brownsville, yeah, you're going to be probably on the air where the president of the United States is going to be in Brownsville and then the former president of the United States is going to be in Eagle Pass. Why would he go to Brownsville? Only 12 people crossed Brownsville yeah. yesterday. 12. Uh, when it's bad, it's 100, 150. Well, you know the answer to your question, right? Why? They can't go sit in the epicenter. They can't go where, where illegal immigrants are pouring over the border unlawfully. If I wanted to solve the problem, I would. We know that that's happening. Look, you know, now Democrats are going to say, oh, now they're complaining about where he's going to the border. It's important he goes to the border. He's going to the border. Does it change his policies? I don't know. I, I say roll tape on every Republican for years leading up to this moment who called on this administration to do something for them to only say the border secure, the border is closed, the border is in a better condition than it was under Trump, to now be calling it a crisis and saying Republicans aren't doing anything about it. Right. I want you to hear what Mayor Adams said about sanctuary cities. Cut 15. New Yorkers have the right to be safe. And if you were to talk to the average New Yorker, uh, I believe they will line up on the same side with me that we should not be allowing people who are repeated committing crimes uh, to remain here, and we cannot collaborate uh, with, uh, with ICE in the process. Now, I feel that yeah. way. Do you feel that way? Horrible. Right. Horrible. I mean, that we should have at our disposal the federal resources to get these people out of the country. I look at New York City and, like, it's bad. I mean, you. I, how often do you go to buy the Roosevelt Hotel? Yeah, um, every day. For anybody listening right now, I go by there every single day. All the restaurants and the businesses that are around there, they've had to close their doors. You see um, the big story today about how much security out. we're paying? About these but huge guys in elite security force in order to keep the migrants from beating each other up in the Roosevelt Hotel. Yeah. So that's huge money. Oh, Plus, you can't walk by there. You cannot walk by there. Um, I, I think you've probably heard me say this on my show. Um, I stop on occasion and ask police, like, hey, what's going on here? You see all the scooters lined up. They're not lawfully owned. They're not registered. Cops say in most part, they're for the, for the most part, they're stolen. They're told not to do anything about it. They don't have the resources to track down who owns these. Yeah. Are they, you know, are they illegally owned? But they're using them for the, the gig economy is what we're told. Uber Eats, as yeah. they say. Or... So th this is that economic impact. Charles Payne keeps citing this. He says the, the, you cannot separate the immigration crisis from the economic crisis we're going through today. We are highly impacted as an, uh, as an economy by the, all these immigrants coming into these American cities. The Washington Post has a story today about how this really helped the economy because we needed workers, and now I guess we're using those workers. Oh. And Senator Langford has told me, too, there's Republicans out there who don't want to E-Verify. Because a lot of them in rural communities, they need to use these illegals because they can't get any workers. If you have E-Verify, when they, they'll they light up, it says you don't belong here. Mm. So that's why we don't have E-Verify, because people looking out for their own. We should just pick up the pace on legal immigration. That would certainly help. Well, the New York Times yesterday, I chewed on this with Larry Kudlow last night. The New York Times had a piece yesterday morning basically saying that, well, Trump doesn't have a plan to decrease inflation. In fact, his policies would increase prices in this country one of the main reasons why because he would deport illegal immigrants and that there would Guilty be a, there, there would be a labor squeeze and therefore that would push prices up can't so, make that up so i want you to hear what kevin o'leary said on primetime last night just about what's going on with the crime with the civil case and what's happening in new york cut 20. the competition of states started five years ago when all of a sudden taxes and inefficiencies and poorly run jurisdictions started seeing people leave and you can count san francisco as one of those places you can now count the state of california you can count the 1200 license plates that are changed into florida from new york state every day and so that's happening anyways before the migrant issue hit the more successful states like a tennessee if you look at nashville it's the fastest growing city in America, have figured out a way to deliver goods and services on a very competitive basis. This is really about management. It actually is about management. Some cities are well managed, some states are well managed, and others are not. And now, post-pandemic, we have the competition of states. And I frankly think it's healthy. It's healthy, and people leave in New York. And so they're going to up taxes because their tax base is leaving. Yeah, and I know this has been a big discussion. I think the, I think the 
something we're if not saying when we when we identify that trend that does continue um, is that the very people that are hurt the most by that are the people who can't flee. They don't have the money to pick right. up and move their family or put their kids into a different school or a private school in another place. And, you know, they, they, they're they not as mobile. So the very people that this administration says they're out to help the most are being hurt the most by their ineffective policies. America Reports co-anchor Sandra Smith is here for a few more minutes. She's on from 1 to 3 p.m., uh, if you're watching on Fox Nation or looking on the app right now, are you going to be wearing the same outfit at one? Uh, I, I I will change, actually. You do? Now that you just reminded me, I will change. And by the way, we'll have the Biden speech okay. on crime. And we'll also get a KJP White House press briefing. And maybe get something from the Hunter Biden behind closed doors testimony. Very well could.